Mailbag. It's the mailbag. It's another do, 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 episode. Do, do. Chaps, it's been a while. Uh, so some of these mails in the bag uh, yeah. may be referencing slightly older mailbag episodes. Are they out of date? Let me Are they guess. No, no, no. Let hey, me guess. Moldy? No. Have they got mushrooms growing on them? No, no. Just the end of April. I, I, we, so first of all, I want to say to everyone that emails in, thank you. A lot of your emails are just not something that I'm going to read out because they're just people saying, I love the podcast, which is really lovely. Thank you for I can that. imagine you actually going through a physical bag of mail, picking out things and holding them at arm's length by your <laughs> thumb and forefinger and like holding your nose being like, oh, don't want to, this one's not good. No, we, we get some good ones. We, we do get some good ones. Some of them are just stories about where people listen that are very long and include pictures. But I, I read them and thank you. I, I'm not going to respond to them all, but they're also not going to get read out because sometimes that's it's just right. like, I can't just read out, oh, here's a listener from so-and-so. It's just kind of, that's, it's not growing the conversation. That's just like sucking but our actually, own dicks, I think. we are yeah. not ahead at all in terms of uh, videos, um, videos, Trifles podcast going out. So this will be right up to date. It's not like we've recorded months in advance. Right, you know, yeah. This video is going out next week kind of thing. Indeed. Uh, video. I keep saying video. Sorry, but uh, so I, I don't think... So we haven't done a mailbag for, for a little while. So we, I've got I've got emails from April here. There, there are a couple of hundred that I just... I, I could go through and might read and pick out the very best ones. But some of them are quite referencing things we recently did. Anyway, I'll get right to it. I'll start off with this one. This is from Lucas. Dear Perry and Sips and Lewis, I would like to thank you for clarifying the incredibly confusing and frustrating experience that I had. As a Dutch PhD student in Ireland, I found myself in a shopping centre where an employee from a sports centre directed me to try Argos for the item I was looking for. Although I had briefly searched the website of Argos, I assumed I only dealt in electronics and was unsure how it might offer a swimming cap. I set foot in the Argos and was greeted with an unusual sight, an almost empty store with a long counter, and behind it mounted on the wall were displayed various electronics, such as a high-tech vacuum cleaner. For the rest, the store was entirely empty. I could not comprehend what I saw. Was this some sort of joke? A minimalist <laughs> concept of a store? Or was this a bank? Because banks tend to look that way. I could not believe it and walked out in confusion without oh, even wow. daring to speak to the woman behind the counter. A few Wait, days I ago, there was some... Avant-garde, fancy, yeah, some kind of modern pop-up wankery design. But wait, yeah. so you just you just left without any answers? Well, like you I, you were just happy to leave it at that? I don't think they realized how it worked. They just sure, thought, what kind like, of store is this? I mean, man, I don't know about you guys, but I would stick around and and be like, this is fucking great. Like, I'd be talking to everybody. I'd be like, help me understand this. Like, <laughs> there's no way would I would you? just walk away being okay, like, oh, imagine this there fucking, was like this is well, concepts, <laughs> and just leave. Imagine there was a concept store, right? And it was just like a white, empty room. And there was like a man behind a counter at the end. Like an Apple yeah. store. You go in there, there's nothing That's on the walls. That's an Apple store, yeah. Yeah, yeah like an app. But you, you talk to him and he's like, you know, what do you sell? And uh, What do you seek, I, young man? I, I sell whatever you're looking for. I sell the idea, the vision. And you, what do you say? You want a swimming cap? Yeah. So, um... Well, what's wrong with just, you know, letting your hair get wet? <laughs> exactly. You don't know what you're going to get embroiled in. That's exactly. it. It's too... Want, too, too not, it's, you just use a rubber glove and squeeze that over your head. It's too zany for me. I just like... I, I like to go into somewhere and stand in a, a long queue to, to talk to somebody. And then when I talk to somebody, I like them to not be helpful. And then I like to leave angry as well that's what that's that's just what i'm used to right so that's mm. what that's what I, I, expect. I am scared to approach people to ask for things um generally i just that's i'd rather walk wise. around the store multiple yeah. times not knowing where the thing is than actually ask someone i think with your history of social interaction with normies avoiding yeah. interacting with them is probably the play i'll be honest i saw an article maybe. the other day where um a guy in little an old man in little was looking for something and looking for some help. So he asked um, someone he thought was a staff member. It was actually just a normal customer. And they helped him like the whole way through the store, helped him check out. It was just like super wholesome. And he didn't even realize that they were not an employee until <laughs> until he left. I I've had um, this before where people will ask you, do you know where the so-and-so is? And it's tempting to say I don't work here. But if you do know, why not take a minute out of your day? To, yeah. To I, if someone. someone asks me, I'll usually give them yeah. like... They can tell I don't work there, though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. usually wearing a pink hoodie or something. I'm not like I'm not like smart adjacent enough to get away smart with accidentally being mistaken for a small a, a uniform. Do you know what I mean? I think sometimes I I've asked I've thought about asking people, and then I'm like, is this? 
person does this person work here because they they look like they're wearing a very similar get up to the actual uniform yeah hmm all yeah. right let's change the vibe uh this is some classic haikus from the 17th 18th and 19th century right uh, and these are all fantastic Right. Wait, are these are these uh, made up or are they the actual these like are real haiku, real written, ones? Yeah, these are okay. written yeah. braced for wisdom by a guy called Get the Pan Pipes out. Bash, Basho, who was considered the father of haiku. Oh yeah, uh, yeah and some yeah. by a guy called Issa. Uh, so these are classical haikus, the original haikus. First winter rain. Even the monkey seems to want a raincoat. That's one. Okay. Right. Year okay. after year, <laughs> on the monkey's face. A monkey's face. That's another oh, wow. one. Wow. Still very alive. Wow. Yeah, true. Very true. You, there's you, no denying it. Yeah. The man pulling radishes pointed my way with a radish. I like that one. Naked. That's a good one. Naked that's... on a naked horse in pouring rain. I mean, that just sounds like a great Sunday, in all honesty. Uh, naked on a naked horse in, in pouring, pouring rain. rain. A huge frog and I staring at each other. Neither of us moves. I mean, actually, these original haikus don't. Aren't, are better than modern haikus. These are just mostly my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> These sea slugs, they just don't seem Japanese, which is a, an interesting. This guy, this guy, like, this guy was tweeting like, long before Twitter yeah. was was even thought about or invented, right? Yeah. Like that. But I feel like I feel like haikus have become more like that last line has become its own statement, whereas. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like people are using haikus as like, oh, I don't know. They're, they're like um, swimming cap in Argos. They have it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, oh, uh, maybe that's not the right haiku that's strategy. Not, I think but... it's 575. But so the reason some of these were not 575 or, or that format was because of the translation. So they've lost oh, a little bit of the, the, the... These were all written in Japanese and then translated uh... into English. So they've lost a bit of the... the, pe the, the would it be... Pentameter, I don't know, whatever the the meter oh, is. Oh well, you the, need to have thing. the you need to have the meter, or else it doesn't make. That's why well, they're all right. I'll so learn weird. Japanese so I can read a haiku about a monkey's face. Well, I no, mean, but if someone's translating it, they need to keep the form. That's you know, very that's difficult. the art of translation. That's very difficult. I'm not going to. But I'm it's important. Blame, all right. Like, well, it's Lorenzo, like, it's like get when on they, it. When they translated Harry Potter yeah. into all these other languages, they had to also come up with the anagram for. I am Lord Voldemort, Tom Riddle, Tom Marvolo Riddle. They, everyone had to come up with that in their own language. Uh -huh. um, and it was, it was an important plot device. I'm just saying, don't, right. don't read me haikus that aren't in the I fucking apologize. format. That's Lorenzo's Give me the wrong fault. idea. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, here, I got a good one for you. Ready? Wait, you've got some emails? No, no, I've got some oh. haikus. I've looked up haikus because oh, okay. I was interested. <laughs> what about this one? The old pond, a frog jumps in, the sound of water. These are so. I could write like a million of these a day, right? <laughs> like, uh, like nonstop. Well, write a, write Can I make money haikus? writing these? <laughs> write us some haikus for the I'd next I'd be like episode. a haiku factory. Uh, yeah, I'll write you a whole bunch. Sure, write no me some, Yeah, write us okay. some haikus for the next All right. episode. All right. Yeah. Oh, fuck it up. Uh, this is from uh, Mrs. H, who says uh, I'm an accountant and I always listen to your podcast on a Friday morning in the office. Right. Uh, my office is full of old men wearing cardigans that are very serious. It's an accounting right. office, so right. that makes sense. Get Actually, them onto the podcast as well. They'll fit right in with well us. Now, well, now, hold on. I treated <laughs> no, myself on. to some wireless headphones recently and nipped to the loo whilst wearing them, but left my phone on my desk. The distance between desk and toilet is far enough to disconnect my headphones and start blasting the podcast through the phone speakers. Unfortunately, this was the episode where Perian was discussing his freshly shaved balls. Nice. I walked back into the office to some very concerned stares. No direct comments yet. It appears no one wants to ask a middle-aged woman why she was listening to people talking about testicles whilst working. Uh, Mrs. H, I'm sorry. I'm very I, sorry. I don't don't apologize. You got nothing to apologize for. I think it would be worse if, if we'd be ranting about a video game or a TV show. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Jeez. I think, like, so what if, off lightly what if on Lewis one, was off on, like, really off on one, you know? Like, sometimes when he just goes right off on one, it could have been far worse. I think that's honestly. probably the best thing that the best time that they could have heard. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, that was a good bit. Yeah, could have could have gotten could have hit close. some new demographics. I'm not apologizing. Sure. No, no, no. Uh, that's fair. Never apologize. Uh, this is an interesting one. I can't believe this is true, but apparently it is. This is from Meredith from Montana. I vetoed my husband naming our future child Pimpus. Pimpus. Wh Pimpus, which was his German great grandfather's nickname. Pimpus Maximus, Lord well, of all pimps. Their last name <laughs> is von Gontard. So the kid would have been called Pimpus von Gontard. 
Jeez, uh, we have not God. settled on an alternative yet, so give me no, your best. No, I think that's a good call. I, I think I, I think the 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 worst case scenario is that your child is named Pimpus. Pimpus is some kind of name. Anything, anything else, I think would would be fine. You know, yeah. Just any, any old name, as long as it's not Pimpus. What about Crimpus? Uh, I think anything with puss at the end of it. What about is Limpus? Just, yeah. Limpus von Gontard. Um, Dimpus, I think Dumpus. von Gontard is, is pretty bad. I mean, the, the, the two closest words to Pimpus are Pimple, which isn't a pimple. good one, and yeah. Pompous, which is a bad one. And, I mean, pimp, and, like, yeah. and just Pimp, yeah, you, straight you up. Don't wanna, you don't want to, just don't, don't, just don't. Say yeah. it, call him um, pimp, pimp, Pimpus ain't easy. What about, about that? Gimpus? No? Gimpus, yeah. yeah. Gimpus. Mm. Gimpus von Gontard. <laughs> von, von Gontard. Von Gontard. Gimpus von Bolgag. My, <laughs> my one and only son, my firstborn. All right, I like this one. This was from someone called M Minor Ed. Uh, I was reminded of your conversation about names you don't get for younger people after watching previews for the upcoming Final Fantasy game. Right. The name they've gone with for their protagonist is Clive. Clive. For, for me, Clive is a name reserved for middle-aged English men or older, usually yeah. quite plain and doing something uninspiring like accountancy. No offense. Yeah, yeah. You don't really see any younger Clives, it's and that's side, definitely true. Is there a character in it called Alan, and uh, maybe they meet somebody along their way, like, you know, in the haunted forest or the forest of death called... Colin, Ma Colin, <laughs> yeah, Mark, like... Clive, and Alan join them on their adventure. <laughs> Middle-aged accountants in a fantasy world. So th th this became increasingly funny to me as I watched How's through the game preview. At the funeral home, Clive. <laughs> Good. Pretty slow. Going all right, Cole, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Is Nigel here? No. What about Derek? No, oh, he's going to be around later. Got about Nigel. F fucking hell, Nigel. Fuck you. <laughs> so these are some of the lines from the preview. Companions will accompany Clive on his adventures. Clive oh, no. takes control of the iconic might coursing through his veins. They even had a woman with a northern, northern accent asking Clive, uh, Are you still busy saving the world, Clive? Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. Clive. You yeah. don't hear that name very often. It's good Clive. to have a comeback. It's an old how one. How do you feel about naming... How, how do you feel about John? John as a, a name. I don't mind John. John's a fine name. It's very yeah, John's kind of it's kind of timeless, really. John, like yeah, I don't know. You hear it's, it? I think it's come back round. You know, yeah, like mm. it was uh, it was super old, but now yeah, I'm a fan. John, John, Jonathan. It is timeless. John I think Nathan. It's one of those ones that's always been okay. I've had like I've I've not met any Johns I didn't like. Got to admit, you know any Johns you didn't like? I um. Well, we had a we had a John at our school uh, who, for the most part, I liked, but he dicked us one time so hard. He was the first person who got a Super Nintendo with Super Mario World, mm, but he right. did the classic. He invited us over and we thought, fuck, this is amazing. We're going to get to play Super Mario. We were like 10 years old. We're going to get to play Super Mario World. I can't believe we were so excited. We get to his house and he's like, oh, let's play outside for a bit. And we're like, oh, really? Like <laughs> We just came over here to play Super Mario World. And he had us outside for like four hours oh, in the snow twat. and we're yeah, just like that's... the whole time he's like hey guys let's make a fort and we're like okay can we go play super mario after that and he'd be like just fucking leading us on constantly like uh yeah. so oh, yeah right. i have met a john that i didn't really like much it turns out or john uh, i mean yeah. i bet he was just desperate for some real fun with his mates and uh, oh man yeah. we just what were about not george George? Uh, I don't really... I've known... Uh, the, all the Georges I know are women, called Georgina. I don't know a George. Georgina. Yeah, I don't I, know I've, George I've heard of like... Georges, but I don't know any Georges. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't I, know a single George. I don't think George. I know a George. Mm. Could be what, about, wrong. what about Ringo? Ringo, I don't, I don't no. know a Ringo. I don't I, know As far as I know, there's only one Ringo. Anyway. Yeah, Ringo. No one, named, no one named their children Ringo, did they? No, no. <laughs> that was not... The name that caught on. Yeah. John, Paul, George. John, Paul, and George are all very sort of standard. George, yeah, you do, names, you do and then Ring, but Ringo is just out there. You know, I know like some people with kids called George, like their kid is George, but I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know a, 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 an adult George. If I do, if if I do know a George and you listen to this, I apologize. I've just forgotten you in the heat of the moment. Um, How about Paul? Uh, oh, yeah, I, like I know Paul. some Pauls. I like a Paul. I know some John Pauls as well. So that's John that's Paul. Yeah, double. That's a twofer. Mm, that is a that is a uh, try that. Well, yeah. it's, it's maybe John maybe. Paul. You know, you Gontard. don't you, you don't get George with anything, right? Like you wouldn't have like John George, George John, boy George, maybe. I think if you oh, went yeah. for George George von Gontard, you'd be George von G. That's quite cool, GVG. Yeah, well, that's that's, yeah. that's a D nickname right there. Yeah, yeah, von G. Yo, GVG. Like, yeah. what's up? All right, yeah. we got an email here from Spencer. This is a good one. I work in planetary defense. 
That right. means protection from asteroid impacts. The work yeah. has wow. two steps, asteroid detection and mitigation. I work on detection. Right. It's really interesting, a bit strange to work on something that probably won't matter within my lifetime. Significant asteroids, such that might destroy a city if they hit dead on, are once per hundred years roughly, and dino killer asteroids are once every hundred million. So my work will probably not get used while I'm alive. My day to day is writing code that scans telescope data to find asteroids and simulates their paths to see if they might hit Earth. Nice. Uh, I'm sure you're wondering if any rocks are headed our way now. We don't know of any big ones, but new school works, new small ones are discovered all the time. I'll let you know if one is coming for Jersey. We don't all live on Jersey. But I yeah, don't want no. The, the the odds are impossible that it would just hit here, right? Um, I my I always envision a big one landing somewhere far away, and then much like in the opening cinematic for World of Warcraft Cataclysm, if you're familiar, when a big tidal wave hits Booty Bay, mm. I imagine that's going to happen to Jersey at some point. Maybe not in my lifetime. Okay. That, oh for me, God. is the worst case scenario. I don't envisage actually anything impacting directly on Jersey, because I don't know how that would work. Mm. Like, if it hit Jersey, it would, uh, would it create a, I guess it would, right? Depending on how big, if the asteroid was the size of Texas and it hit Jersey, we would just if be If the asteroid was smushed. the size of Texas, it has nothing to do with Jersey. The entire planet is. Well, the one yeah, that, yeah. the one on Armageddon was the size of Texas, right? Right. But and that then they used didn't uh, hit, did it? It didn't. No, hit, they had enough. to use nuclear warheads. Yeah. In the middle of a love triangle to try to uh, <laughs> to sort it out, <laughs> and it, and they did right. Yes, they did. That's that's the movie when it was cheaper to train miners to be astronauts. I mean, Bruce to be Willis. Astronauts. Bruce Willis is like sixty in that movie, and his love interest was Steven Tyler's teenage daughter. And no, my... that was his daughter. What are you talking about? Oh, sorry, I misremembered the movie. Sorry, I thought. Oh, what, 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 what was his love interest, or was he? He didn't have a love interest. He, he was, was just the to... guy who was going to sacrifice everything to save his yes. daughter. So he was. He was trying to prevent um, Ben. Uh, no, uh, what's his name? Um, it's the not young Ben lad. Affleck. It's Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. It, ben no, Affleck it wasn't. Was in it. Yes, he's no, trying to prevent. No, was. Ben it's Affleck the... wasn't in. <laughs> Dude, look it up, please. Okay, right now. man. Before we, you're gonna generate emails. I'm gonna have to respond to. Please just look it up. Ben Affleck is the guy. He's trying to sleep with with Bruce Willis's Liv daughter. Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler. Yeah. And yeah. he's trying to prevent this because he doesn't think Ben still is up to it. Oh, uh, but Ben Affleck. Ben did. Ben that's Stiller. the Ben. That's ben the Affleck's Ben we're looking it. for. No, listen. <laughs> when did Armageddon come out? Because I'll I'll be honest. I only saw it. Okay. Uh, I want to say ninety nine. It did it not come. It was like ninety five. There's no way it came out in ninety eight. It was ninety eight. It was Fuck me, man. What the hell's happened to me? I, I've lost track of like all. There's no way I watched that in the cinema when I was eighteen years old. There's no way I went to see that. But I did. Apparently, you did. I did. Yeah, time. It's the only time I've seen it. What was it like? What, what do you remember from that then? Well, not much. Well, apparently. I remember. I remember <laughs> Ben Affleck not being in it. If that helps. <laughs> I also remember <laughs> Bruce Willis <laughs> getting it on with Liv Tyler. So yeah, maybe I'm just thinking of a different movie. Yeah. Very different film. This one is from Brandon. I'm about to start my master's degree, currently looking at places to live in London with my right. partner for afterwards, which would require a job. Uh -huh. uh, we're currently looking at the Richmond area. Oh, I'm yeah. aware that Pyrian lives near there. Do you think it's a nice place to live? Do you have any tips or advice for two postgraduates living in London? <laughs> Young Brandon. Um, good luck. Uh, someone studying master's degree doesn't have a job trying to get a place in one of the most expensive parts in London. Good luck to you. Good luck to you and your partner. That's all I can say. Man, I think you could apply that to like pretty much anywhere in the West right now, right? Like, it, like the price of housing just generally is so fucking absurd. Like everywhere, I don't mm. even think you can get a place out in the middle of nowhere for cheap anymore. It's just oh, I like, think you could. It's just you would literally be, as you said, in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so hard now. I don't know All what the, the cities hell. are expensive, really expensive. I mean, I tell you what, surprising because that you know the ability now to work remote and to do stuff remote like it's surprising that more people haven't managed to get out um of the uh, cities, maybe right? it's maybe maybe people will be doing more portages than uh than they have historically you know maybe people yeah, are gonna like, want they, to get really remote into the bring us they get their satellite get phone a satellite out phone Apple out Mac. yeah they hook up their do, do a solid seven hours microsoft shift office 2023 on a, on a I think the, uh, the the government had a real chance. All the governments in the West actually had a real chance to help with so many issues that are faced by people still insisting on going into offices. Number one, yeah. you would cut down on commuting, road traffic, overuse of, of rail networks, the prices, all the rest of it. 
if people didn't have to travel as much as they do. You would also cut down on the congestion when it comes to house prices. Everybody needs to live within a certain radius of a place like London or wherever in the world you are. If you could just go and live in the country in a very cheap, nice big house, you would spread everything out. There are lots of empty houses out there, houses that won't sell, houses people don't want to buy because there's nothing near there. You could solve all of these problems. You could spread the country out so that we're not so congested, services aren't so overworked in key areas. Spread us out. We've got all this land. We're not using it. All these properties that are just cheap and underused, spread it out. Everybody works from home. Problems solved. Well, you listen here, bucko. That's not how I've historically made my vast fortune. So, uh, no, I'm not uh, with exactly. you on that one. I want to stick to the old ways. Them. I've only got like two years left and I want to I want to I want to leverage maximum value out of all my shitty business decisions. So fuck exactly. you. OK, it's a good point. I, I think like there's I'm always like looking for the other side of the argument right but i can't see what the argument is on this like somehow that everyone has better mental health from coming into an office and meeting people like, gibberish no thanks no hell. it's uh right. it, it's it's let's do something that makes sense and that would benefit a lot of people and then the pushback is from one person who is a billionaire who wants things to stay the same but because that person has way more money than everybody else we do what they say they, we do what they say yes so, yeah, every fucking Richmond, time for god's sake like you know it's for suburban PFLAX fans families he doesn't want more he yeah. doesn't want more, get more out people all right this one is well, this it's, one it's is more a great like email. how you're gonna possibly afford it that's exactly. the thing isn't it like, this this like, one is directed at you lewis all this right? one oh. is this one is i'm looking to move to richmond can i get a loan please <laughs> the, my, lewis, the follow lewis up Brindley. email <laughs> this this one is entitled all caps falsehoods in best tech video wow. that's the title uh i'm a historian lewis oh, was incredibly wrong talking about warfare and violence in hunter gatherer society first he made a bizarre argument about low percentage of population deaths in world war ii I would snarkily invite him to look at casualty figures for the USSR and Yugoslavia, exclamation point. Second, there is a fascinating field called paleosociology, where academics study what kind of societies exist with, existed within tribes and between tribes in the pre-settled period. There is scant evidence of warfare, as, considering tribes were relatively small and there was plenty of space to mob up versus to fighting a neighboring tribe would be nonsensical. Instead, there is plenty of evidence for trade. Uh, in summary, Settled agricultural societies appear to be considerably more violent than hunter-gatherer societies, and World War II led to immense proportions of population loss in many countries. That's Joseph being extremely unhappy with you. My God. Right. You really ruffled um, some feathers there, Lewis. That's, that was well, one of about 50 emails complaining about that episode. I can't argue with actual historians, can I? You know, so. I would just say this is indicative of people hearing what they want to hear on the podcast. They're not listening to us saying... Please don't email him with your corrections. We state openly that we don't know what we're talking about. You do not need to correct us. We know we're wrong. Every time we do these, and yet still I get about 50 emails from furious experts. I get that they want to correct us, though, because it is kind of weird that we don't really know what we're talking about, but we will speak so passionately passionately about it, you know? Yeah, it's just like, a laugh, isn't it? Like we do know what we're talking about. It's almost like a game that we play with each other where we try to convince each other of falsehoods yes. you know it's like a game yes. yeah so there's a book called the better angels of our nature by stephen pinker right who won some awards he's a froofy haired man stephen he he wrote a book and it's it's the idea that we are currently being sold this idea that the 20th century was the most violent one in history but he argues that humanity has been violent far worse and far more far different ways throughout its history yeah. and i this is where i was getting that from so if you don't think so so yeah sure maybe maybe have a look at that you know violence compared to how it is today so he basically argues for the whole 800 pages that violence has been diminishing for a long long time and we're living in the safest world we've ever lived in but media says it's not, right? Media says everyone's being murdered and there's yeah, drug cartels well, yeah. and everyone's, you know, killing each other. Yeah. But yeah, even taking into account the, the wars, uh, it, and that is modern history, yeah. right? We're a lot less violent than we were previously. And I'm not saying that people didn't die. I'm not defending you myself. Do you think it, do you think like just, <laughs> I, again, I don't, I'm, I, 
you know, I'll say like Flax, I don't, I don't know, really know what I'm talking about. I'm just venturing uh, like a, a theory here. But do you think we're a lot more aware of violence because information spreads so quickly now as well? You know what I mean? Like everything's different. It, it it, like be. a long, long time ago, maybe it was uh, violent or less violent. I'm not too sure. It's, you know, I'm sure there's people out there who, who know, like the guy who emailed, whatever. But um, you know what I mean? The, that information and, and especially uh, reliable information information that you can, you know, really believe or whatever, would have taken a long time to get around, right? Uh, it would have just been word of mouth and, you know, maybe things would have changed or whatever, you know, the sacking of a kingdom could have been lied about easily or not spread around or whatever. Whereas mm. if something like that happens now, you have people on the ground with drones and helicopters and the fucking internet and everything. And everybody knows the moment something happens nowadays, right? And because mm. it's so easy to report on every single thing that happens, and we do get flooded with every single thing that happens, it appears to be more violent, right? But maybe he's right. Maybe it is It is far less violent. We just hear about everything a lot more quickly now. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I honestly don't yeah. know. Yeah, and even, even the book that I read is written by one man who is an atheist with a certain point of view and a certain historical yeah. education, yeah. a certain yeah. historical yeah. understanding. And I think when we talk about things, we just... We just spout the pop the most popular view right we aren't necessarily nuanced in our takes on stuff well as we should be and so that's why yourself, i can yeah, imagine yeah. we should get comments yeah. like <laughs> ideal in we're also not we're yeah. not the high school history class either we no. don't really have a responsibility no no um you have responsibility to check what we're saying is right. <laughs> no you, you don't you don't or at least believe that we believe that it's right yeah um no we do don't have mean? to do and, that either and you should you should always consider things in your own mind um, and, and if they sometimes if they gel then maybe maybe that's what you should I think a lot of people have to I don't I don't choice, actually mind right? being uh, like corrected I just some sometimes I'm just not sure if I'm being you know s spun spun a tale a bit you know like if somebody if somebody comes up to you and they're like I'm a historian it's like okay are you though like i don't know if you actually are yeah. and then you know like mean, how, if the how can guy whose job it is to find asteroids came to me i would be like oh i believe there's an asteroid sure yeah you know what I mean? yeah if it was some guy in his back garden like my friend's dad who was like oh yeah that, that one's the size of texas anyone know bruce willis <laughs> we have to send him up isn't he having sex with his daughter <laughs> i don't know <laughs> fucking do you know what i mean like like what geez, we're so hazy thing. around the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> we need to strap we need to train a load of miners to be astronauts and strap a load of nukes to it we need to also build two space shuttles because we're america and we do everything twice <laughs> apparently oh, i so should remember a, that from backup, the movie isn't it? they had to have two in case something went wrong with the other one well yeah so you can't you don't want to get caught with your pants down we're gonna sure. get one shot at this because of the timing window if they wait too long so let's when build they, two yeah because if they wait too long <laughs> when all it right blows everybody up, the big moment it looks like they're about to deploy the new oh, oh the shuttle's crap oh I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. Lewis said no not to bring plan. another one. So, oh, yeah, we no. We just better bring one. <laughs> well, why not build three, though? Why not build four? We just, like, if it's uh, that big, important. Big plan with no contingency. Just uh, such a schoolboy error. Because but uh, yeah, It's going to take them too of, long um, to build another space shuttle. But if you've this got reminds two... reminds me of Don't Look Up. Did you watch Don't Look yeah, Up? Yeah, yeah. I didn't watch yeah, it, I actually. That. Yeah, I should it watch great. it. I should watch it. Yeah, it's very depressing. It's how these astronomers have to convince the modern government to actually believe that there's an asteroid coming. Oh, it's great. It's a really good movie, actually. Enjoyed nice. it. Yeah. Is this thing working? Well, that nice young man, Lewis Brindley, normally records these, but I'm on my lonesome today, so I had to do it. I hope the tape is running, because today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey. What a sweet number of words that is, PayPal Honey. What's even sweeter is that you can use PayPal Honey while shopping on the internet. I want to talk to all of you young people about coupons. For years I've organized them formally in a series of large warehouses, employing an army of young people to heft barrels and boxes of them around in my direction, but no more. I got a little button now, when I press it, my computer Vanessa, that's what I call her, she thinks for a moment and goes and finds coupons for me. No more searching yourself, get Vanessa to do it for you with the the honey coupon but I've saved money on lumbar supports, mothballs and denture wash. You might like to purchase something too and you can do it on your computer or even your iPhone whatever that is so you can save money on the go. I got a, I got a computer address here hold on 
go to joinhoney.com slash Triforce and get Honey for free and start your savings today. Don't miss out. That's joinhoney.com slash Triforce. And back to the boys. Here we go. This is from Aaron. G'day from down under, lads. Just wanted to ask how Terry the Tortoise has been doing. He's been wait- he's waiting for an update on Terry. How he's is fine. Terry? He's big. He's a lot bigger now. He's get he's all frisky because it's uh, the the weather's warming up and he knows it. So he's trying to escape constantly. Mm. He's subdued during the winter because he's meant to be hibernating, course, but he's yeah, still yeah. too small. But now that the weather's nice, he wants to go out. So he's been out most days. We take him out for a bit, but. I gotta get him like a proper run so that he can spend most of his days outside and then just bring him in at night where it's yeah. when it's safe, you know, sort of Is thing. Is there but any threat to him of predators of any kind? Or, not or now. Not? He's big enough now where a bird wouldn't really be able to cart him off. Right. And, uh, you what know. about a pelican? Uh, well, yeah, I don't, there are not many pelicans land in my backyard. Okay, so, that's fair. Um, if one did, well. they could potentially take him. But yeah. in my experience, uh, most animals just don't understand tortoises and stay away from them. Like you see videos on the internet all the time of cats and dogs, just like, you know, they'll run right up to them and then have one sniff and just be like, and then just like leave. Like they just, (laughs) they don't understand like what it is or what it's doing or whatever. And and they just leave it. Yeah. So no, we're not too worried about that. It's more, it's mainly, um, we're, we're worried that he might dig his way out underneath like the fence or whatever, which would be not great because it would be it's not that he's fast or anything but he could just potentially wedge himself in somewhere that would be hard to get him and uh and that's about it really we just gotta all right just gotta sort it out you know but yeah he's fine uh, he's fine good update there for you have you set up um the fountain i bought i bought like um no i bought you (laughs) you need to get him a have you have you got him a bigger cage you've got you've got him a bigger cage now no no because he goes outside in the summer so he's still in his baby cage well yeah but yeah i know but he's like i said he has to have a cage like 10 times his length or something he's basically sleeping like like, all throughout the winter but in the summer he's outside all the time so he's got the biggest cage. he's got he's got uh the whole world is his cage during mm. the summer you know oh gosh there's some philosophy there There you go that's my first haiku all right this is a this is a, an email this is a, i would say a moral quandary that's easily solved uh and the question is advice right okay? this is from johan uh hey uh i'm going i think i'm going insane after i moved into my new uni flat right to keep it short i walked into the shared living area uh-huh. and saw one of my flatmates naked having a wank to porn that he had cast onto our shared TV. I had a flat meeting with him and my other two flatmates, but they all agreed that it was perfectly fine and natural. Am I the asshole here? I've walked in on him doing it several times since, but I just have to wait for him to finish so I can go about my day. What do I do? I honestly, I think that is fucking disgusting. And there's no way that you should have to put up with that and build your day around some fucking flatmate having a wank in the shared area. Yeah, Go to if you, your you, room. You, yeah, yeah. I would either. I would just look to get somewhere else. I mean, the, yeah. the thing is, not worth it. You gotta. You just gotta. It, whenever you have a situation like that, don't try to to change it. If that person is hell bent on doing that, they're just gonna do it. So just find a new place. Yeah. It's much easier. Just find a new place with people who aren't just like jacking off constantly in the um in in the in the shared common area or whatever and uh and just move on. Like there's Maybe no point. Okay. For, you got to pick your battles. First, if he's doing that in the shared area, think about other things he's doing that also he considers no big deal. Yeah. I guarantee this is a guy that doesn't wash his hands after having a big old shit. That's the kind of character we're talking about here. If they're willing to do that in essentially in public in front of all of you, Whatever they're doing in private, I don't want to fucking. So know. what is Get he just gone. stark naked and he is just yeah, like naked just having a wank in the fucking pumping on the sofa hard. or whatever? Is he moaning Watching and groaning as well? We, I don't want to know. I think it's just it's disgusting and it's, disgraceful. It's pretty gross. That's for, yeah. pri- that's for private. Come on now. Okay, here's here's. You're not going to play contrarian to this, are you, Lewis? He's got a counterplay well, here. No, of course not. But right. how how about how would you feel about if he wasn't having a wank if he was having sex with someone on that sofa? I would also right? be annoyed by that. What if, if it, it was a regular? What if it, what if it was uh, a woman instead? And I you mean, walked it doesn't in. matter. Get the fuck out of the shit area. That's something you do in the privacy of your own room. Fuck off. I'm sorry. That's it. You're not an animal. How did he, I, I'm just stunned that he managed to out charisma the rest of your housemates at the house meeting. I just think he's got degen housemates, mate. Is what it is. Get rid. 
Are people just too woke? Is this is this an example of people being too tolerant? How of is something? this woke? Well, Jared. it's like oh, you know, we're accepting of other people's Man, sexual uh, needs and stuff. No, I mean, that's just like, but that's, that's, it too far? But the thing is, if that's what how people want to be, then I'm sure that they could just find another flatmate who fits in better with them rather than the person who doesn't like that. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to leave. People are just going to do what they're going to do. Like, you know, you just got to you just gotta find people Shooting who... Shooting houses are gross enough without people yeah. worrying about, like, him fucking naked on the sofa yeah. in that, that... Yeah, it's gross. It's it's, that's, just, I, no, would, I, I, I personally cool. wouldn't like it either, but at the same time, I would just... I just don't know just how leave. he managed to bring people around in the house meeting, because I would have thought at least one person would have been like, what the fuck, dude? Can't you just do this in your own room? What's his excuse for not doing it in his own room? Yeah, fuck you off. Know? Is he an exhibitionist? Like, what's the deal here? I mean, if the argument is he, he doesn't want to watch porn on his little phone screen, I, I've got no sympathy. Sorry. Everybody's got a computer these days. What you've got to do on the TV? Fuck off. It's disgraceful. There's no defense for that. Um, here's another email. Change what of kind pace. of porn is it? No, no. no I don't want to know. Uh, I'm currently living in Australia, coming back home to the UK for the first time in almost a decade this year. A flight from Sydney to Edinburgh would take 55 hours. What? Yes, you read that right. Two whole days, either on a plane or in an airport somewhere. Some flights had an 18-hour layover in addition to another different layover somewhere else. That's twice as long as 10 years ago. Might as well swim. Instead, I'll fly to London and then train up north, which would be quicker. I will try to keep my tiny pecker up. My question is... What are the longest slash worst journeys you guys have endured? And I have a, the pleasure of a 10-hour train trip every time I go to visit my parents. A trip which doesn't even span half the length of New South Wales alone. So worst and longest journeys we've endured. So the longest journey or the worst journey you've endured? Okay, my longest is an 82-hour bus ride across Canada. Uh, Jesus. Multiple times. Not not in a bus every time. 82 hours on the bus. Same 82 hours in, in a car with my parents and my younger brother, but which would have taken us a week plus to do. But the bus was pretty much like nonstop. It would stop every once in a while for like a little break, You'd go to the coffee shop or whatever. Sometimes they would change buses. Sometimes it would refuel or whatever. You could just get off and stay there and then catch the next bus that was going the same way sort of thing. But we didn't because we were just trying to get somewhere. So, yeah, it was like 80, 82 well, hours. Where straight. were you going? We went from Ottawa to uh, Victoria, British Columbia. But, but to, to what end? Oh, to visit my uh, my, my grandmother lived in uh, Victoria. Jesus. Yeah, it's it was cheap. It was two hundred bucks for the ticket <laughs> for two people. Yeah, I bet. So we were just like we we're pretty pretty broke at the time. We were. Where we were are you students. stopping though? Were you not? Were you not? Does it not stopping? Oh is man, it, it like... stops everywhere. Thunder Bay, Sault Ste. Marie, Winnipeg. It stopped in like fucking Moosehead. You you name it. Like it stopped <laughs> no, no, everywhere. No, okay, was it not stopping for the night or like? You no, know, no, it, it like... would go all night, all day and all night. You just went all day and all night for eighty hours. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that is hell. That I is read like five books. Of, it was insane. Yeah, that is awful. How, what were you like sleeping on the bus? Like, yeah, as well, sleeping like, on the bus. The yeah, just on the just seat. on the seat. In the yeah. same set of clothes. Like, did you not? Yeah, not like. Did you not ever? Like, no, every once up, like like a couple of times stops? we freshened. Yeah, we got we we got off and ate and like freshened up a bit or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I was like fucking nineteen at the time. I didn't really care, you know. I just like it was two hundred. Was bucks. it normally a thing where you'd only do a leg of it? Like you weren't supposed to do the whole lot. Yeah, normally one. normally people would just do a leg of it, but we like I said, we were we were trying to get there, so we just we just oh, wait hunkered you, you down, got there, and then when we we flew back on standby for cheap. So it was we we missed like the 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 trip back. It was good. So I was going to say you had to fucking come back. How long yeah. did you stay for when you did the visit? Uh, we stayed for two weeks. So oh, okay, it was all right. Still, that fucking sucks. That's like yeah, a but month. I was two weeks with my grandma, so it was nice. Yeah, she was just like you know she like she like uh she was just like like looking after us and stuff. It was really nice. Yeah, she had like this, a nice I'm condo looking at and this, stuff. Um, fucking, I'm looking at one of these popular flight tracking booking sites um kayak i don't fucking care i'll just say which one i'm using <laughs> i'm not sponsored uh but uh it says here i could get a flight from sydney to edinburgh and it's only like t t the cheapest one is 25 hours so and that's one stop the cheapest one that's two stop is 30 hours 26 hours which is still a lot it's not 50 hours though no i'm not seeing any numbers that are as high as 50 here however maybe it's a, he's booking it on a specific time when none of the flights sync up but i mean i did that um trip because the thing is sydney australia is is too far away from the uk to do 
a um, single single flight. There are like the longest flights in the world. I think London to Perth in Australia and London to Tokyo. They're like eighteen hours in in the air. Um, but everything else you have to everything else is is like um, a, a, tr- a transfer somewhere like 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 in in Doha or in Dubai or somewhere like that. And there's like places that, or Hong Kong. So, I mean, I did that. I did the New Zealand trip, and man, it was a long fucking journey. It, it was like l- longer than a day door to door, like 30, 35 hours or something. It was or thirty hours. It was a long fucking trip, and it was it was crazy. And I I don't know, like I just I'm not someone who can sleep sitting up right. so i really struggled with it um yeah it was a nightmare like it was like you know when you i don't know if you guys have ever done the 24-hour live stream or some sort of 24-hour no, show or, no. or something like that i've tried and anyone who does that it seems really doable and anyone who does it is like like physically sick afterwards they are they are like 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 it's like they always say never again because you, they it's way harder than you think it's going to be staying up for that long because it's just it's like that sleep deprivation it's like torture yeah, so, I mean, we don't realize how awful it is. I'm like, cr- um, I'm like chronically sleep sleep deprived at this point in my life. So I I think like I don't know if I could do 24 hours straight. I'm probably still be pretty tired. And and the thing is now as well, I I can fall asleep very easily. Like oftentimes I can just sort of doze off if I'm like in front of my computer and I'm not talking or interacting with anybody. Certainly if I'm just sitting on the couch in my house or like on a bus or something, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm out. Like I'm sleeping straight away. I always away. wonder which way to go, right? Do you go on the depressives route? Do you have like melatonin and stuff to like knock you out, right? But the danger no. of that is that even with those, you don't, you can't sleep, and then you're just in this I don't need help of being exhausted, but not being able yeah, to sleep. Yeah, yeah. But no, but I'm just saying for a long plane trip, right? Or do you go with the stimulants route and have like meth to keep you going? Oh my for god, the man! Plane trip, long right? plane trips, like I, I, I love them now. I used to hate them, and now I love them because it's just like what eleven hours, and I get to sit there, and nobody will ask me questions or talk to me or anything. Yes, please, I will do that. No problem. <laughs> well, I can sleep whenever I want well, and just do whatever ask I want. You things they'll be like, do you want a hot towel? Do you want a pack? Yeah, yeah. I don't mind that. To, there's no, there's not a lot of the responsibility. Guy next to you will need like to have a, a piss like yeah, yeah. multiple times. I, mean, well, I yeah, assume yeah. this must be if you were flying alone because if you're flying with little kids oh yeah no i'm I'm talking about flying alone yeah no not with not flying with little kids that's it i I would agree whenever i fly business it feels like a little mini break it is yeah for sure flying flying economy still does feel like shit yeah yeah flying economy you got to just kind of hunker down like uh i just i I just try to fall asleep immediately and sleep as long as i can and then hope that it's over soon but the the handful of times i've flown business it's been like holy shit so good worth it right for sure this is a good one this is from from max uh, these are this is this is some trifles trivia. So it might seem a little bit self-referential, but this is this is like some throwback trivia about things that happen in old episodes. Okay. Who rushed to end the first episode of the podcast? It would have been Lewis for sure. It was Lewis only forty minutes in, but the podcast <laughs> ended up being ninety minutes long. So what? you set a, a precedent right there for not listening. <laughs> oh right. Were we, were we planning on doing a longer podcast? No. Originally? Apparently, we were planning on doing a shorter podcast, and you tried to end it. We were like, "Shut up! We're enjoying this," and we just kept going for an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Uh, what home installment suggestion was Perry appalled by when the builder suggested it? Um. So this must have been when we were having uh the kitchen redone. Oh, so this would have it... been about five or six years ago. So near the beginning of the podcast. What was it home that you? I re- I I vaguely remember this. You being appalled by the suggestion of of an improvement, but I can't fucking remember what it was. So it was no idea. A partition wall to separate off the children from us. Oh, <laughs> yes. We would have a living room of our own and the kids would have their own living room. Um, right. That and, is uh, insane, yeah. eh? That yeah. is, what a wild suggestion. I know. Uh, and then this one, the topic of men fucking power stations, bicycles and pavements. Yes. Was the first discussion of its kind on the podcast. How long into the series did it take for this topic to come up? Well, it depends because it was uh, it was in the news around the time. I want to say that it was really, really early on because I remember talking about this <laughs> at length <laughs> around the time. Yep. This is before the garage was even completed. It was uh, it was still like dungeon mode in the garage, so it would have been like pretty early on. I think. So give me an episode number. Oh fuck! I don't know. Like maybe ten or something. 
Lewis, any thoughts? I have no idea when All this right. was. It was episode one. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was only forty minutes in, so it was around when Lewis was trying to end the podcast. Was called. that the first was oh, that man. Oh wow. Was yeah. that the first time we talked about it or the second or the third though? That was the oh, first time. There was a, there was the, there was a bunch of stuff in the news around the same time. There was the dude that got caught in the hotel room fucking his bike, his push bike, and then another dude was done for fucking the pavement. Uh, in like uh or like he, he was he like fucking a section of road or something yeah and right, he got yeah. done in and then yeah. somebody brought up the fucking a power station or something like that but i think the two bits that were in the news were the push bike and the pavement right because both people were where arrested it, for it where does it end <laughs> yeah those chimneys though i can see why people would be attracted that's a very that big, that i'd like a new chimney hole. um sir and i would like you to ensure that it is fuckable 100 percent fuckable <laughs> my chimney if you're putting a chimney in i want to be able to fuck it whenever i want it needs mm. to be fred accessible dibner up there to check it <laughs> fred, dibner. fred dibner fucks chimneys that would be an interesting series <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why he was obsessed with going up there all the time was he yeah. he was a yorkshire wasn't he fred didner yeah, yeah, he was a steeplejack. He was a steeplejack. Where he was, was he one of these brave generation of crazy lunatic from men. Manchester. He just, I'm going to fuck just, that chimney. Watch he this. He would just <laughs> climb up a chimney and fuck it. <laughs> Fred, what are you doing, you mad bastard? <laughs> fucking chimney. <laughs> fucking chimney. <laughs> Look at me fuck this chimney. <laughs> I'm up here fucked. I'm a steeple, steeple jacker off. Her. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, right, here we go. Massive fan from Sweden here. Thank you, Gabriel. I run Thank a you, paintball Gabriel. company, a paintball company, together with two friends All here right. in Sweden, and wanted to know your guys' wow. opinion on paintball. What do you guys think? I like a bit of paintball. Uh, the last time I did some paintball, I was um, I was sore for the longest time because it was in a in a valley, so there was a lot of like running up a hill, hiding on a hill, running back down into the valley and stuff like that, and it was fun mm. at the time. But I was crippled for the best part of a week afterwards. Uh, it hurt to walk upstairs. And also, I had quite a few welts from being shot. Yeah. Point, point blank, mostly. The, it the, really hurts. The one gripe I have with paintball is that there is... I find there's very little respect for... Um, you know, like, you know, if you get the jump on somebody and you say, Hands up, I got you. They turn and shoot you all the same. And you yeah. just think, come on now, I got you fair and square. I could have shot you point blank and you've just dicked me by shooting me point blank when I had you fair and square. You know what I mean? That happens a lot. I think it's an adrenaline thing or something, but it, that, it, that pisses me off about paintball. I think, okay, I think paintball is the early noughties office corporate training fad, right? That was this big thing back then that's largely been overshadowed by airsoft. You think? Now. Yeah. Because um, the airsoft, airsoft is guns the, is look cool like real guns. That's the thing. Paintball. Yeah, right? I don't know. The thing about paint, paintball was that when you got shot by a paintball, there was very little paint in them. And oftentimes, like, you weren't even sure. I mean, you, you felt it more than you saw it, right? Like, I get the idea of it's proof, right, that you've been shot. But I think what happened was over time, at least I think over the last sort of 20 years, it has become more honourable and there's less of that. Although I'm sure, I'm positive because I've seen some airsoft channels where people get shot and they don't announce. Um, and so someone shoots them again, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and But I, I think it has gotten better in general. And I think that... You think there's been some reforms? Yeah, I think so. I think maybe just the kind of... You have to be a bit of a dick to not go down when you've been shot. Yeah. Or I think it's the pain. Like, it's like I want to play. Get, like, I, 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 <laughs> I bring this up a lot. I, I want to play a paintball match where if you get shot, you have to lay on the ground and pretend that you're dead. So that I think people oh, you right. can instead you of, can survey the battlefield a bit. You could be like, oh shit, right. Jones went down there and he's still there. He's fucking dead. You know what I mean? Medic, like I want an medic. immersive experience. You know, I don't. Well, want, that's how I don't it's want amateur on, hour out there on I, like <laughs> community and like um. And, you know, TV shows, right? Yeah. Any TV show going paintball for an episode always portrays it so much more dramatically like a than civil war is. reenactment or something. Yeah, yeah, and there's pain everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, in it, but actually, it's never I mean, that quite I, that I, my, my biggest thing was I, I quite like the idea of paintball, but I think the issue that I had with it was, first of all, um, it really fucking hurts when you get shot. Like, you, I, I've been hit on the, on the thumb before by a paintball, and even with quite thick gloves on yeah it hurt so much that i was like i don't want to do this anymore like, have this you ever been be uh, hit on the tip of your dick before by a paintball no no me I, neither. I haven't no 
Meaning is it worse? I'm pretty paper sure or airsoft you get, though, which well, is worse. I don't think airsoft hurts as much. I'm sure it stings, but it is a much smaller projectile. And a paintball, especially if you get one of the hard ones that doesn't pop, it really fucking hurts if it catches you just right. Like, I, I listen. I don't need air e- emails from airsoft fans. But just Tom, just edit this so that it goes out both ways. And I'm saying both paintball hurts more and airsoft hurts more, and then they both communities can be happy. It's it, paintball I definitely don't get feels like hit. it hurts more for sure. Like I think I've it's, never I think done just... airsoft before, so I I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm no, sure I it can't. It either. physically cannot hurt more. I mean, it, it, it's it's much smaller. I like the pellet. idea. It's so is airsoft just like BB guns? Like is it yeah, just it's like, like a the little, little plastic, plastic BB. little oh, BBs. Oh, little plastic yeah. ones. Ah. Yeah. You ever been shot with one of those old metal BBs? No. Oh, what, they what hurt. What do you mean? That's, well. That'll kill you. No, no. It's it. it it's it, like it's no. It's not like it can't airlock. penetrate your skin really. Yeah. But it hurts. It does. I hurt. mean, it, it, it's a little. I've I've seen a, an airsoft pellet. It's like a small white plastic ball. Yeah. Like if if people are gonna tell me that that is more painful than a paintball, which is quite big, yeah. and traveling at similar speeds, I'd be genuinely very surprised. Um, I'm you sure it would hurt. Those, those, fucking, uh, those 22 BBs will kill you if you're not careful. I was, uh, they, they're dangerous. I was reading, uh, I read the the, uh, the Corner. You ever you ever seen the, 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 the miniseries, The Corner, or read the I, book, I, The Corner? After The Wire, I was tapped out. I didn't want to see anything. Oh, right. It's, it's, it's very depressing, but uh, it's really interesting because it was... Um, the corner was written kind of from the uh, the point of view of people who are you know living in crack houses and 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 stuff. But there was the, an interesting bit from one of the homicide detectives when he was explaining like the calibers of um, of ammunition used. And most people think like higher caliber is better, right? But like he was saying, yeah. You, you know, a higher caliber round, like a rifle round or something, if you get shot with that, it'll pass right through you and it'll do a lot of damage. But he said the prob- the, 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 the worst thing is getting hit with a lower caliber round because it doesn't have the power to pass right through you. So if you get shot, like say in the gut, it's not going to come out the other side. It, what it does is it just like pings around inside you. So it actually yeah, does yeah. more damage. It shreds up more organs. And so they say actually getting shot with a lower caliber round is oftentimes uh, more more fatal than just if you get shot with like, you know, the hunting rifle, it, the, the the likelihood is, yeah, it'll do damage for sure. There's tons and tons of factors, right? But it'll, uh, it'll pass through you and, you know, maybe it's a little bit easier to... I don't, I don't know if any of that is true. In all well, I, don't again, know. I, just, like, it, I read it, it, it in that it, book. I don't know if it is. It, right. it depends. It depends where you get here. It depends how quickly you get it treated. It depends. Like sometimes it can pull fabric through yeah, into the wound yeah, with yeah, the bullet, yeah. and that can be a real problem as well. Like, um, but obviously you know, the so bullet still being things. inside you is an issue too, right? Like they have yeah. to get that out of there because it can I mean, poison I, There's you. no doubt. I'd say in summary, getting shot fucking sucks. But well, yeah. getting shot with. Yeah. A supersonic round is going to do a disgusting amount of damage to you, just because it goes all the way through. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Punching all that stuff out. Yeah, and I mean, you. obviously, depending where you get shot as yeah. well is going to be a big I factor the, the too. But thing, I just thought it was interesting because I just, I, I just is, thought is all how, bullets how were much, equal. You know, no, no, no. It, it, I mean, how much the bullet expands is a big part of it as well. Because when you when the bullet, if it stays mostly whole, like if it's a very solid bullet, like an armor piercing round or something. It will go right through you and yeah. make a hole. And if it doesn't hit something important, it's a grave wound, but it's not like an expanding bullet where the softer the bullet, the more it expands. When it enters your body, all those shards of metal splinter off and shoot into organs and create holes and yeah. internal bleeding all over you. That That's a big issue as well. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, this is from Nathan from Texas. Uh, a lot of those bullets are banned, though. What? No, like, no, dumb, no, dumb that, that, no, whatever. no, but we're not talking about hollow points. Just, I mean, for a start, those are not banned. Um, well, armor penetrating. You can still buy them. No, you can buy them. T- I mean, all of these rounds, are, they use them all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about that whole dumb, dumb round being banned thing. I mean, there's lots of hollow point bullets out there. Anyway, howdy, Perry and Lewis and Sips. Nathan from Texas here. Wanted to reach out to tell a quick story about my time working in a local jail in the grand old state of Texas. Wow. I worked there for three years. And here's a funny story about a fellow who managed to escape. Uh, I'll drop the accent. At this specific unit, it was high security, where the highest charges, escape risks, and aggressive inmates were held. In this unit, every inmate is a single person cell about the size of a family bathroom. Anyways, when this unit was built, the doors were built with anti-flood protection. What this means is if it floods, the doors would unlock so as not to drown whoever was in the cell. This proved to be a massive flaw as one inmate was able to pee into the lock 
tricking it into thinking it was flooding and unlocking. No way! Now that, would, now that would normally not be that much of an issue, except one of the handymen who broke fixed items left his ladder on the floor. This inmate was able to use the ladder to climb onto the ceiling and make his way to a non-secured portion of the jail where he found a window. Next to he the window, peed into the window and the window <laughs> opened as well. Next to the window was a fire hose that was there in case of fire. He proceeded to break the window, throw the fire hose out, and climb down. Isn't it ironic that all of these safety measures happened to enable, you know, do the exact opposite, yeah. enable to, to escape? Anyway, he then climbs out the window and starts going down the fire hose. As he gets to the end of the hose, he realizes he's still three stories off the ground, and below is a nice, cushy, concrete sidewalk. He did not have much of a choice at this point, so he jumped down and managed to break both his legs as expected. Oh! He ended up crawling and made it a couple of blocks to the local oh gas God. slash petrol oh station where he was God. picked up and rearrested. Um, <laughs> Fuck. If it did not help his cause, he left a trail of blood behind him. Oh my uh, God, oh man. man. Jesus Christ. So close. Indeed. So close. Fuck. That so is close. insane. What an insane story. Thank you for sharing. I, I, I find stuff like that really interesting. I, I can't believe he pissed into a lock and opened his cell door. That's fucking insane. Jesus Christ. Great. God. Maybe you've enabled uh, like a whole generation of prisoners now. Everybody's going to try the, the lock piss trick. You know, mm. the minute you get in. Pee hey, in a lock. Pee in a lock straight away. If you're locked see, out this see. weekend, try peeing in your front door lock. And yeah. Just see, maybe you've got a security uh, flood thing there. Who Holy knows? shit. Crazy. These are great, by the way. The yeah. Tip, thank you. For I know. We've had some really these, good These ones. have been v They're vetted crackers. to perfection today, Flax. You've done such a good thank job. Thank you. I've tried. Uh, so I, I will say half of the emails are about poop. Um, nice. I've filtered them out. Because... Well, I mean, half of the episodes of the podcast are as well. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's fitting. We do mm. talk about poop a lot. Uh, just a very quick one from Sam. Dear Triforce, I'm an estate agent. Sorry. <laughs> That's the, that's the you the scumbag! You fucking <laughs> scumbag! Fuck you! Anyway, thanks for listening to the podcast this week. Thank it's been you. really it's fun. Great, great podcast this week. Yeah, yeah a really good well. one. Yeah, thanks really good. Everyone. Thanks good for, for coming. Thanks in. for coming out, everybody. And uh, oh, it's so much God better bless. than the normal podcast oh, this man. week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this has <laughs> been a breath of fresh air, honestly. Well, well we've still got a couple of hundred emails that I haven't managed to get. Amazing. To. Oh, perfect. Well, well, hang on to them. We'll do another one of these next time. All right. All right, you thanks guys everyone. in a hurry to stop this now because it's lunchtime, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's, uh... it's lunchtime. I'm, oh, I'm going to start to get yeah, hungry very soon. So, Woo! Well, it's actually, it's mental health week in the office and we're taking everyone out for burgers. Oh, uh, nice. Why are you doing that this week? Bring, I get there on Monday. I'm there on food. Sunday. Yeah. You could go out for burgers as well. Yeah. Just you do whatever separately. you like, man. Just so you turn up, you go out for burgers, take everybody out for a burger. Why not? That's a good idea. You know what? I'll do it's that. It's crazy. Thanks. You, you won't. Right. You're, you're not here. You're in Florida. I'm not here next week. No, but I'll be back. How long are you right. going um, away for, Lewis? If you mind me asking. Just a week. Just one week. Okay, so we'll see you, you a uh, week after. You be back in time for Triforce. Will you be back um, on Thursday, ready to go? No, I'm gonna miss. A, I'm gonna miss a week of Triforce. You oh. fucking oh. scumbag! You were a fucking disgrace. <laughs> disgrace. <laughs> and I've got a job as an estate agent. Yeah. <laughs> Scum, <laughs> you piece of <laughs> shit! <laughs> Fuck you! Uh, all right, bye, everyone. Bye. Peace. Bye.